Hello and welcome to the Sunday Rundown. I'm Mitchell. And today we have the next chapter in the Dawnbringers Crusade. Looks to be... Hmm. So this isn't exactly more order. It's called the Shadow of the Crone. It is focusing on Crathusa and her campaign to basically battle Marathi. It is the first time we've seen any one that is kind of in the Daughters of Cain that has gone against Marathi. Uh, but it looks like that's about all that's in this book. Uh, let's let's look what it says. So it says, The book features uh, Carthusa, the Crone Seer, plus Callus and Toll, their ragtag band of allies, along with a new army of renown and a new regiment of renown. So it doesn't look like a whole lot rules-wise compared to all the other books that had, like, you know, one for each faction um, for the regiments of renown. Although, other than Chaos, we had a Everybody book, a destruction book an order book the last one was death this one is kind of none of those it is order but we'll, we'll have to see exactly what's in it uh, the other thing this includes is the strong point of assault rules for team based match play which is honestly probably the part that i'm the most interested in although Carthusa herself is a really sweet model as we'll see below so part five of the Dawnbringers, as far as we know there is one more part the chaos part and uh, we will see that later in the year. Next, we have the Saviors of Cinderfall, which is the Callus and Toll ragtag group that they mentioned above. It's very similar to the Blackthorn for the um, Stormcast that released late last year. It is basically a bunch of named characters that all have story that they're releasing a book for. Uh, but this one's cute. We talked about these before. Uh, it has the, the guy with the literal key to the city on it, which makes me roll my eyes and groan every time I think about it. The cat that they were very, very focused on in some of their rumor engines. And then, you know, just another Grift Hound. Like, why, why is he special? What makes him special? I know people like Grift Hounds, I don't care. Uh, next we have Carthusa, the the crone herself. Uh, she is coming with a bunch of Daughters of Cain models. They are five Doomfire Warlocks and ten Sisters of Slaughter, uh, which can be built as Dark Riders and Witch Elves, respectively. These are interesting because these models are decently old. Like, they were old world. Uh, definitely the uh, the Doomfire Warlocks were old world, but I don't remember if the, the other ones were. I mean, box looks good. Hopefully a decent deal. I don't know how exactly big she is. She looks like she might be on a... Because if those are 25s, probably a 65 mil base. That's pretty good. Can someone say Demon Prince conversion? Next, we have the Spearhead Stormcast Eternals. So the Spearhead, they have announced, is the basically the new versions of the Vanguards. They are kind of like start collectings. You buy them, they're the introduction to the faction, and then you go from there. Th this one's a little lackluster because it's... A bunch of stuff that was in Dominion and Dominion didn't sell very well, even though it had like a whole new fac sub faction of orcs that looked really cool, it did not sell great. So the spearhead of Stormcast Eternals includes Yendrasta, three Annihilators with Hammer and Shield, ten Vanquishers, and a Storm Strike Chariot. Oh, and the Knight Vexilor which was also previously only available in Dominion. Or, uh, I don't know if it was in any of the starter kits. Because I think it's on the same sprue as Yandrasta, but I might be wrong there. The models still look good. I like Yandrasta. She's an amazing, amazing kit. The rest of it's fine. The chariot's cool. I'm not hugely blown away by this. Meh. Next we have the Spearhead for Cities of Sigmar. Uh, this includes 10 Steel Helms, 5 Cavaliers, a Free Guild Cavalier Marshal, and the Great Weld Cannon. That is better to me. This is, it's not just the army box, it's some extra stuff to make it feel different enough. Unlike the previous two boxes that we just looked at, these are basically all new sculpts. When the cities got their new box, everything got redone. So this, the... This whole kit looks great. So if you're a cities player and you need some of this stuff, pick it up. And then we have the spearhead for flesh cheater courts. Uh, this is basically just the army box, unlike the other one. It's got less stuff and it has the uh, the aberrant arch regent. Sorry to look at, look at what it was, but it has aberrant arch regent, ten crypt guard, a vargulf courtier, and 
three more bag knights. This isn't terrible because the Regiment of Renowned is basically the Morbeg Knights and the um, Crypt Guard, but it's fine. Again, basically all new sculpts. The, everything except for the Arch Regent is brand, brand new. The Arch Regent came out with the second edition book, so like three years ago now, but he still looks really good. He's not old world uh, looking. This one looks good. It's a good supplement for Flesh Eater Quartz players, or if you just want to dabble and pick up some stuff, it's probably a good smattering. And lastly, we have some Warcry terrain. We have the terrain, the Elder Narlock, uh, which is the meat tree. Oh, that one has a mouth. Okay, they grow, they grow mouths when they get old. The Idol of Matsul Poda and the Starfire Pylon, which are all in the Warcry boxes, similar to the one that I'm about to show. These are fine. If you like these terrain pieces, go for it. I am not a fan. It's basically a mix of like Seraphon, Aztecian symbols and bamboo rafters with meat trees and brambles. They look fine. They're not for me, but they look fine. My problem is these are great for Warcry. They're not great for anything else, in my opinion, because they're not area terrain. They're not line of sight blocking. They're just kind of there and they're not going to do much other than make you go around them in my opinion, but I don't play Warcry. This is similar, but at least uh, the, is the Maw Pit, I guess I should say. The Ogre Maw Tribes, when it came with the, um, I don't remember what it's called, their Warcry box. This one, on the other hand, looks very cool. I It still isn't really area terrain, but it tells more of a story than the other pieces we just saw, the Narlock and all that stuff. Narlo. It looks right. Um, Maw Tribes players are probably going to do it to spru uh, get it to spruce up their board if they don't have it already. And, uh, it, or just like any chaos board, this would look good on. Uh, I am a fan of this one, even though it's still, it takes up more area. So it's, it is a little more forgiven in that. Then we have some books. I normally wouldn't be talking about these, but this is Callus and Toll, uh, the book where the saviors of Cinderfall come from. So if you want to find out their story, this is the book for you. And that's it for this week. Uh, so, a bunch of Age of Sigmar stuff coming out. Some terrain, some new Vanguard, quote-unquote Vanguard boxes. And then Crethusa the Crone Host. The only thing that kind of annoys me is I am a I am a main Chaos player, and Chaos has not gotten their book yet. And then they come out with this, which is kind of like a supplementary, supplementary book. It's not really like all the other Dawnbringers books that all had, like, something for every faction. This is one regiment of renown one army of renown which yeah could probably not be confusing at all um and then some like multiplayer stuff i feel like they could have come out with the chaos book first uh that being said this model's great um i'm probably gonna pick it up when it comes out by itself because it is gorgeous hell i might pick up the this box and sell off the stuff because i don't want the daughter stuff i don't really care about any of that you know what maybe i'll make them into demonettes Make the whole thing into demons. Screw it. Anyway, for us at Miniatures Rundown, uh, thanks for watching. If you liked any of this stuff, let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.